Hi, my name is Melissa van Dijk and in this video I'm going to show you how you can use retinol. Now retinol is an anti-aging ingredient that can help you to improve the appearance of fine lines and wrinkles and textured skin. And it can have some benefits if you have acne prone skin as well, but it's not considered to be an acne treatment. Now please keep in mind that I'm only talking about retinol, not retinoids, which is different. And so when working with a retinol serum or cream, I want to quickly go over the order of application and then go over the frequency and then later on share with you the entire application on my face so that you can see it visually when trying this out at home so that you get all the information that you need to know when getting started with your retinol product. Now retinol should be used in your evening skincare routine, doesn't matter if it is a serum or cream. And the way on how you're going to use it is by first of all getting started with washing your face with a suitable cleanser for your skin type and needs. Make sure that this cleanser is able to remove any excess oil, dirt and sweat from the skin. If you have worn sunscreen throughout the day, then make sure that your cleanser is able to break down your sunscreen as well. And please make sure that you're using a gentle cleanser and stay away from exfoliating acid cleansers when including your retinol in that same routine. And then once you're done with washing your face, you're going to pat the skin dry and then move on to either your retinol serum or retinol cream. And then after that, if needed, finish with a moisturizer that's suitable for your skin type and needs. Now let me explain this because using a moisturizer is not always needed, which depends on the overall formulation of your retinol product and your skin type. And so if you aren't sure about the formulation overall, basically what you can do is try it. Try it along with a moisturizer and try it without a moisturizer and see what works the best for you. So if you have, for example, normal to dry skin and you have a hydrating retinol serum or hydrating retinol cream, then using a moisturizer afterwards may not be needed unless you have really dry skin because retinol can make the skin drier, then using a moisturizer afterwards is highly advised to do to balance it out so it does not become severe. And if you have a retinol serum or cream that's not so moisturizing, then using a moisturizer afterwards again is advised to follow with because then you're going to again balance it out a bit more. However, if you have normal to oily skin, then you may enjoy the benefits that retinol can give you, which basically makes the skin less oily. And so then using a moisturizer afterwards is not really necessary. It doesn't matter if you have already a retinol serum or cream that's a bit more hydrating and moisturizing, or if it isn't as hydrating or moisturizing. Then using a moisturizer afterwards may just be occasionally, which again depends on how dry your retinol may make your skin, and basically just use a moisturizer afterwards if you really feel the need. If the dryness becomes a bit too much for your preference, then I recommend following with a moisturizer. But in that case, you may want to look into a lighter moisturizing lotion or gel so that it does not feel heavy on the skin. And so this is basically how you can adjust your evening skincare routine accordingly to the formulation and your skin type. It's basically like trying it and see what combination works the best for you. Since a moisturizer, again, is not always needed. It. And so this would be an example of an evening routine when using your um, like retinol zone. However, when not using your retinol zone, which I will explain in just a moment, then what's really important to do is again just washing your face with a suitable cleanser for your skin type and needs and then follow with a moisturizer again if you should feel the need. It's fine to also just cleanse your face and that's basically it since it's your evening routine. Or if you should have any other skincare products, um, then you can follow with those as well and so that you're going to alternate between your retinol and the other skincare routine that you may have so that you're giving your skin a bit of time to adjust to your retinol zone, which will make a little bit more sense in just a moment. And then when waking up the next day in the morning, what's important to really do in your morning routine, doesn't matter if you're going to use other skincare products in between, is cleansing your face to remove your previous skincare products from the skin and that you have a freshly washed and clean face. And then please don't forget to follow with a moisturizer that already includes SPF or follow just with your regular sunscreen. So sun protection during daytime is important, not only to protect the skin from premature aging or sun damaging the skin, but because we are working with a retinol. 
Now retinol itself does not make the skin sensitive to the sun, but based on how retinol works, by basically speeding up the cell turnover, the new cells underneath become a bit more sensitive to the sun since they cannot protect themselves and therefore getting a sunburn during daytime when being exposed to the sun is more likely to happen. So therefore sun protection during daytime is important but in the evening is no sunscreen needed. So please do not forget about those little like adjustments which you need to do depending on when you're going to do your skincare routine. Sunscreen is always key during daytime. And so this would be this would be it as a general guide on how you can use your retinol in your evening skincare routine, the order of application. But now I want to really get into the frequency because overall it depends on the formulation of your retinol and the strength that you are using. Since retinol is likely to cause irritation and the higher you are going up in strength, the more you're going to increase the likelihood of experiencing those signs of irritation, which can be dryness, flaking, sunburned feelings, stinging or burning overall on skin, redness or weird looking pimples. And so if you should come across signs of irritation that I just have mentioned, dryness is not really like kind of like an irritation, it's more like a side effect of retinol, which all these skin types will enjoy but all the other ones that I have mentioned those are signs of irritation so if you should come across those signs of irritation what I recommend you to do is either reduce the frequency on how often you're going to use your retinol or depending on the strength that you have used you want to like basically reduce the strength of it and move down like if you have used 1% retinol and you are experiencing signs of irritation fairly quickly then you may want it to move down to a 0.5 so that you're going to reduce the signs of irritation based on the strength of the retinol that you're going to use and so this now will make a lot more sense when I'm going into my categories. So I want to get started with the first category, which would be the categories of retinol zones or creams where they do not really mention any percentage at all. So you cannot find it on the bottle, nor on the box, nor on the website. Then usually it's a pretty low percentage, which is kind of like well tolerated. It's less likely to cause signs of irritation. And this is where you can get started by using it every other day, up to daily, fairly quickly, which depends on your skin concerns and your age as well. So if you're being younger, let's say you're in your mid twenties, then you want to use it every other day. However, if you're being older, then you can already probably tolerate it daily because the percentage of it is so low and your skin can benefit from it. So again, your age and your skin concerns play a big role as well on how often you can use it. But this is like just a general guide. And then start off by using it every other day for like two weeks and then see how it goes. If you feel like everything is fine, then you may be able to increase it by using it up to daily. However, if you should have a retinol zermal cream at home that does contain 0 0.2, 0 0.3 or 0 0.5 in it, then in that specific case, depending again on your age and your skin concerns and the formulation overall, the best way of how you can get started is by using it two to three times per week. So start off by using it Monday, Wednesday and Friday so that you have a break in between where you're not going to use your retinol and then do this for let's say about two to three weeks to see how your skin is doing with it. If everything is fine and you enjoy how this combination works for you, you can either go ahead and stick to it or if you should feel the need, you can go ahead and increase it and then start off using it by four to five times per week. Again, do this for like a few weeks, see how this goes. If you can work, like if it works really well for you, either stick to it or again, increase it and you may be able to use it up to daily in your evening skincare routine over like a, a period of months where you're going to slowly increase it. However, if over that time you should come across signs of irritations, again, please do not forget to reduce the frequency of it so that you can give your skin a bit more time of adjusting uh, like to your retinol. And so if let's say you do not tolerate well, it well when using it four to five times per week, then again, move down by using it two to three times per week so that you're giving your skin a bit more time because this is fairly individual on how fast you can move up to like uh, using it more often in your evening routine. 
And then when it comes to the higher percentage, which would be 1% of retinol, then I recommend really being careful with it. And the overall formulation does play a big role so that um, you may think like, yeah, you can use it like more often right away because you did not come across any signs of irritation. But believe me, after three to four days when doing this too often, um, like signs of irritation can become quite severe. So I'm not joking about it when I'm saying start off by using it once or twice per week. So you're going to use it, for example, on Monday for the first time then give it three to four days in between and then use it another time on Thursday if everything between that time should work well for you and then if you have used it on Thursday again then again give it three to four days in between before using it again so that you're going to have like an kind of like a routine on where you're going to use your 1% rating all between every three to four days now, in case this should already become too much for your skin, then again, reduce it. You may want to then just use it once per week instead of twice per week. And then give your skin a bit more time. Or depending on your age and your skin concerns, you may not be able to use the 1% more often throughout the week because it doesn't matter how long you're going to wait for it to talk, like that your skin is going to adjust to it, it always leads to irritation. If that should be the case, you have two options. Either just stick by using it um, as less often as you can so that it does not irritate the skin if you still want to stick to your 1% retinol product or would you, like basically go down to a lower percentage and then you may be able to use that one more often if you think of or really wanted to use it more often. But I really recommend taking your time when working with a 1% retinol product. Because the funny thing about retinol is that when using it for the first time, let's say you think, well, I can use it like quite daily already immediately. Well, then after three to four days, you may get like the signs of like signs of irritation already like much later because retinol can give you a late response. Therefore, when working with a higher percentage, my best advice would be really taking your time with it. And then based on that, you can overall reduce the signs of irritation when introducing it into your skincare routine. And so once you experience signs of irritation, and depending on how severe it may become, then you know what I'm talking about, because I'm talking about experience, especially with Paula's Choice 1% Retinol treatment. That one is pretty intense, so I'm not joking about it. And so this is basically an overall guide on how you can adjust the frequency accordingly to the strength of retinol that you're using. And of course, the overall formulation does play a big role on how it's going to give you the effect. Now, once you understand how you can use it in your evening routine, what you can use on days when not using your retinol, and that sun protection during daytime is really important and that you need to adjust the frequency over time, I'm now ready to get into the application. So those were all very important information that you needed to know before getting started with your retinol. And just as a quick note, if you're being new to retinol, my best advice would be start off with the lowest percentage possible and move your way up slowly if you should feel the need. So this is where your skin has more time to adjust to it. So again, I'm going to now get started with my first step if you're going to use your retinol dermal cream in your evening skincare routine. So again, the first step is going to be washing your face with a suitable cleanser for your skin type and needs. Please make sure again that it's gentle cleanser and not an exfoliating acid cleanser. Now I have two examples right here. Of course, those are examples. So if you have a different gentle cleanser at home that you truly love, go ahead and use that one if it works well for you. So I have CeraVe's Facial Foaming Cleanser or La Roche-Posay Tolerant Dermo Cleanser. So ones for normal to dry, for normal to oily skin and ones for normal to dry sensitive skin so that you have an idea of that you really need to adjust it accordingly to your skin type and needs. And if you have worn sunscreen throughout the day, depending on how stubborn it may be, you wanna look into to a balm cleanser or oil cleanser as well to help you to break down the sunscreen and or makeup as well like much better from the skin. Now I'm going to stick to CeraVe's foaming cleanser. In that case when reading the directions on the back of your cleanser please make sure to understand how you should use your cleanser because the directions can change. You either need to apply it on dry skin or on wet skin. So with CeraVe's foaming cleanser for example it's recommended to apply it on wet skin. So if that should be the case for your cleanser as well your 
you're going to get started by wetting your face and neck and hands with lukewarm water to warm water and then use a bit of your cleanser and apply to the skin. If your cleanser does tell you well use it on dry skin then you're not going to wet your skin at first but you're going to immediately apply it on dry skin. Then go ahead and take one to two pumps, so about a coin size amount of your cleanser in the palm of your hand. Use it between your hands and then gently massage it all over your face and neck for about 30 seconds to a minute. And make sure um, that you read on the back of the packaging if you can use it around the eyes or if you should avoid the eye area. So, and once you have massaged your cleanser all over your face and neck, you now can go ahead and again rinse it off with lukewarm water to warm water. Now, in case you should have troubles removing the cleanser a bit better from the skin, then I recommend using a soft and fresh washcloth, which you can wet, and this can help you to remove the cleanser a bit better. So now go ahead and take a fresh towel and pat the skin dry. So now once you are done with your cleansing step, you have pat the skin dry, then you now can go ahead and immediately move on to your retinol product, which again can be a serum or cream. And so if you should have a serum, then you can use between like three to five drops if it, come, if it should come with a dropper. If your retinol serum should have a pump, use between one to two pumps. And if you should use a cream, then use about a pea size amount so that you can evenly apply it all over your face and neck. Now those are just some general guide like instructions on how much you should use. Of course, if you feel like, well, you weren't able with that specific amount to apply it all over your skin properly then you can go ahead and use a bit more but my overall message is please do not overdo it you should be able to apply it all over your face and neck and it should be able to like feel like you have fully covered the area but please do not overdo it by using it too much because it kind of should be able to still somewhat absorb into the skin maybe not in the case if you're using like a specific retinol cream but especially with serums and so I have different examples right here and I'm going to stick to the ordinary retinol in Squalane. Now that one has a pipette where I'm going to stick between three to five drops and then again the other ones would have a pump or also as a cream. And so when applying a retinol serum or cream to the skin, then please make sure that you're going to evenly apply it all over your face and neck, but be careful to not use it on top of your eyelids. Please do not get it into your eyes. You can use it on the eye contour, but if you're going higher up in strength with your retinol product, and since this area is a bit more sensitive, please uh, keep a specific eye on this area right here because this area can become dry and wet pretty quickly, especially around the corners of your eyes. So if that should be the case, um, avoid this area for some time before using it again on your eye contour. The same may happen um, on the corners of your nose because sometimes this area can become quite sensitive as well. And please do not get it too close to your actual lip or the corners of your lips because over time, depending on what's strength you're using again it may cause severe dryness or you may feel like a burning around your lips if you have brought it too close to it. So those are some areas that I recommend being careful with it so that if you know that this is going to occur that you know why it's happening due to the retinol and those areas being a bit too sensitive for it. And so when using your retinol serum, you can either use it uh, a few drops or like one to two pumps on your fingertips or in the palm of your hand or immediately place it to your face. If you should have a retinol cream, use about a pea size amount and then either on your fingertips or just dip into it with your finger to take out some product and then even apply it all over. 
and in this case I'm now going to use it in the palm of my hand, use it between my hands and then evenly applying it all over my face as well as neck. So, and once you have applied your retinol serum or cream all over your face and neck, then you are going to leave it on the skin, there's no need to wash it off. Now, depending on, again, the formulation of your product, you either now can stop it right here, or you may want to follow with a moisturizer afterwards. Now, if you want to follow with a moisturizer afterwards, what you can do is wait one to two minutes in between before applying your moisturizer to the skin. And what moisturizer you're going to use depends on your skin type as well as needs. So if you have a drier skin type, you may want to look for something very hydrating, moisturizing, probably also a bit more of a richer moisturizer. Um, and if you have a bit more of a normal to oily skin type, then you want to look for something lighter, like a gel or lotion. And so I have two examples right here, which I personally really like. I have Differin's Soothing Moisturizer or Restorative Night Moisturizer. So depending on which one you have, it can be from any other brand as well. Those are just two examples, which I really like to use myself. Then go ahead and use that one. So either just dip into it with your finger, use about a pea size amount, a bit more if you should have a drier skin type, and then apply it on top of your retinol, or use about a one to two pumps or about a pea size amount if you have normal to a bit more of an oilier skin type, so that you have an overall general guide in mind when applying your moisturizer after your retinol step. So that one, for example, is pretty light in texture yet moisturizing. So I used about uh, like one and a half pump and I'm going to evenly apply it all over my face as well as neck. Now, if you have a drier skin type or depending on the strength of retinol that you have used and you have used it under the eye contour, what you now can go ahead and do is basically use a bit of your moisturizer and really bring it underneath the eyes to avoid like the dryness and like signs of irritation, which can already like balance it out a bit more so that it won't be as severe. So, and once you have applied your moisturizer all over, then again, you're going to leave it on the skin. There's no need to wash it off. Now, this is going to be your evening skincare routine. So again, in the evening, there's no sunscreen needed. Just please don't forget the next day when waking up to protect the skin with a good sunscreen, either moisturizer with SPF or regular sunscreen. And so this is what I wanted to share with you on how you can properly use retinol so that you have all the information in one video. And I do hope that you find it helpful, that you now will have fun with your retinol pride and at the same time reduce the likelihood of experiencing irritation so that you can enjoy the benefits of it. Now, if you find this video helpful, if you enjoyed it, then please don't forget to give the thumbs up as well as share it. And thank you so much for watching and I will see you soon in the next one. Happy skin caring. Bye.